5 times 10 to the minus 7 in SI units, whatever they are. Okay, so that's one standard geometry. Um, we uh, will in a moment just explore the second one, which is a circular arc, which extends to a full circle, and I suspect at that point we're going to be out of time. Let me just show you a quick couple of demonstrations. Um, this is not the most precise one. I don't think you Katum will be inclined to record this one, but let's see. Um, but before I show you that, I want to show you this one, just to convince you that what I'm telling you is actually true. Hold on, hold on. Got some light up here. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so what are you looking at? You're looking at a projection of this horizontal transparent surface. Slightly weird what you're looking at, but it's the shadow of a current carrying loop, which if you look down here, you can see it's penetrating through the transparent surface vertically here and vertically here. It is a loop. When I flow, throw the switch, the current's going to flow through it. So the current is either going to be going down here, and up here, or vice versa. Either way, it's into or out of the plane. The kind of junk that you see um, everywhere else um, is iron filings. I am being an intrinsically magnetic material, it's like tiny little bar magnets, and um, so the ion filings will want to orient with respect to ambient magnetic fields. So what I'm going to do in a moment is throw the switch, drive current around it, and see how our magnetic uh, ion filings tend to line up. I'm told if I hold this closed for too long, everything will set on fire, so let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Let's see if we can get flames. Okay. So it's not a big effect here. Um, the filings have significant friction, so they're resistant to being oriented. But you can start to see these circular patterns around here. I'm going to go one more time and see if I can get this to be a little more dramatic. So, uh, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I want you to think through the following example. I'm going to show you with this, and this one is not as dramatic. Hopefully, we're still going to have time for the circular arc. Um, if I have two parallel current carrying wires, and they're carrying current in the same direction. on this as a derivation of the final result in my notes, which I'd like you to look at. So, force between two parallel current carrying wires. This is a great exercise in the right hand rule, understanding. Let's have these two parallel wires like this. Let's say I've got current in one going upwards, current in two going upwards as well. What I'd like you to tell me is what is the direction of the force between those two current carrying wires. So first off, why is there a force? Well, if you think about one of them as the source of magnetic field lines, current flowing through one of them produces a pattern of circulating magnetic fields that wraps around it. The second wire is now embedded in that external magnetic field and as a current carrying wire in an external magnetic field. It feels a force, okay? So I want you to tell me, by quickly thinking through two applications of the right hand rule here, what you think you can tell me about the direction of the force between two parallel current carrying wires. Yeah, 
they would attract to each other because if you take the writing rule off of um, the current from wire one, it's going to be going into the plane in the region where I2 lies. Nice. And then likewise, in the region where I1 lies, there's going to be a magnetic field out of the board. Okay. And then if you then do the right hand rule, and you take the current, uh, and then you curl it into the field, you get a force switch in both cases of X. So that's exactly correct. It turns out the force between two parallel currents carrying wires is attractive. If I flip the direction of one of them so they're anti-parallel currents, the forces are repulsive. Okay? So it requires a little bit of thinking both in terms of the production of the magnetic field and then the right hand rule in terms of the force for a current flowing through a uh, magnetic field. So we wrote through that on your own time. I've written it up in my notes. Not just qualitatively, but quantitatively. I want you to know how to do that. So this is the thing that's not super impressive, but let's see. It's visible. Two kind of crappy parallel current carrying wires in blue and black. Um, so the attractive force between parallel current carrying wires. And you should know how to Professor, so I found the formula I was thinking of. It's 1 over 2 pi r, and then it's like lambda over epsilon naught. So it's like interesting how they're like similar. How that? They're similar. Sure. Like, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, remember, we've got a 1 over r squared dependence for both of them, so that's really what's driving it. Okay, I do have time, I think, just to do this circular arc, um, and I'm going to stop after that. So, here's the long straight wire. I will not run more than two minutes over, so please bear with me. So you'll remember when we were doing E fields, we started off with straight wire elements, then we made them into circular arcs. So Radius 
curvature of the circular arc, big R. So this becomes mu naught over 4 pi I dl over big R squared. Okay? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm going to integrate over the arc length. And what is the arc length? Um, so I'm going to do this in the following way. The total magnetic field is the integral over dv. I'm going to integrate over angle from 0 to phi. So let me do this.